you imagine me in Barclays in bricks now? You know, I'm just stepping up to the plate and saying, Yes, Mr. Black Manager, I have the most wonderful sauce and I have a song that goes with it. <laughs> and I was like, Boutique goes the tack, yeah. Rolex my watch, Savaro suits and diamonds in my lap, some taller than Shaq. I'm madder than Max. I'm so swaggerific with style and panache. I've got these eight bars a track before I relax. And I'm rolling with Rihanna around the boot, Jamie Foxx and I'm like, oh. <laughs> much more I can, I can do to enhance and, and, and what I have. Maybe some better suits and things like that. <laughs> but I, I think that I'm ready. And, and my point is that if you're going into business, if you have the idea in your head, before you take it out and you start it, ready up yourself. Start speaking the right way. Again, this is something else, you know, coming from my local Brixton and, and being a Jamaican as I am. For years, I didn't think these things helped. But it really does. Because putting yourself in front of an investor or somebody that's going to buy your wares, you have to put yourself in their position. So when you're talking about fixing up yourself, it's all about the way we speak and the way that we present ourselves and our products. It all has to do with that. So that's my first point about getting yourself ready. And, and I think, as I said before, be the best of you. Because I think I'm the best Levi that I've ever been. I, I, People will know me, I remember 1986, and I'm going to tell you because I know some of you guys, you know, will say, you don't know nothing about my life because you said that, blah, blah, blah. I remember in 1986, just before I thought I was ready, I was in front of the judge and I was facing nine years in prison. I didn't get released until five years after that. So it's no joke thing. Um, and now I remember going back into the same cell that I was sentenced to in Brixton recently, the same cell that I thought all oh, my dreams had gone. So it doesn't happen overnight. But when I returned to that cell the other day in Brixton, I was wearing a 5,000 pound house for a boat hand suit. <laughs> <laughs> so, that shows you that you can do it. Doesn't matter where you're from. Business and enterprise doesn't belong to anybody. You can be a black raster man from Brixton with a sauce called Reggae Reggae Sauce and you can win. That's how it is. My second point is about the business plan. Again, because that's something that we don't <coughs> like to do. And as I said, on Dragon's Den, I didn't really have a business plan, if you saw that. I, think I had a plan, but I didn't really have a, a tight cast business plan. A business plan that a mentor had helped me to do. I didn't have that. And I think that's probably going to be your, one of your most important tools in your armor to go out there and get that business out your head. You need that plan. You need to write things down. You need to network and put all that in the plan. And once you have a plan, the next thing is to get that mentor. Because the plan without the mentor is no good whatsoever. You'll be lost. You'll be like going around in circles. Because you need somebody that's been there and has done it before to sort of guide you through that. That's how important a mentor is. Don't shake away from a mentor. Get somebody in place. And a mentor could be just, your first mentor is usually your teachers in school because they're the one who have the education. But when you're talking about business, it's good to get somebody who's like-minded in your, in your business area to sort of tie up those ends. Now, I have one of the most fantastic mentors in Peter Jones because with my business, I will always need somebody like him. And even though Richard Farley, you know, I brought my shares back and it was great because you know, I went to Dragon's Den to do 20% and I ended up having to do 40%. So part of my plan was always to get it back. But I think with the value that Peter has with, with his shares, far surpasses you know, anything else you know, in the business because of his experience. Um, now we're thinking of moving on the brand from just the UK into the US. 
and things. I don't have any experience of that. He has. He had his TV show. He has a big telecommunication business. So I will need him. And it's the same thing that you will have to put up with, your, with a mentor. You will need him to sort of put all the pieces together. People will ask me, of course, Levi, do you mentor? Of course I do. You know? Who called me up? Anything I'd be willing to answer people's questions and things like that through my website, so on and so forth. Nowadays, we're going back into schools and doing my school of life tour and still trying to put something back for myself as a, as a mentor. You should use up your family. People will know my story that I first started to make the sauce in my kitchen at home. And even though, you know, we said that we were out selling Heinz tomato ketchup, but before that, we were only making 65 bottles in my kitchen with my children. That was the family connection. But now, of course, we make a little bit more than 65 bottles. <laughs> but the philosophy is still the same. That if it wasn't because of my family and having that family team together, within the business plan, I wouldn't be able to do that now. And the third part of that sort of equation that I like to talk about most of all is about staying focused. Because I had a problem with that when I was sort of um, starting my business. Staying focused from switching around from that hustling mentality that I had, you know, as somebody from the streets. Which, and hustling is really different from business. It's kind of the same, because I think that you need that same tenacity. But hustling is always for short term. And hustling is a part of the reasons why now I think I like to bring Caribbean food hot market. Because it's for a long time now we've always seen these um, Caribbean takeaway shops that everybody's so scared to go into. I guess you're back in Jamaica. <laughs> because we've always had this kind of hustling attitude. But I think now is the time to step up the business. Yes. It's the turn it into a business. And thank you very much. Because you know, when we do that, you know, that's when we're taking the, the whole cuisine to the masses. And perhaps that's where I come into it because you know it was brilliant doing my TV show, Caribbean Food Ladies. You saw it on TV. They are cook and are <laughs> so I think that's how to move the, the, the cuisine forward and stay focused with it because it's not just about Levi Roosevelt. I think the, the picture is bigger for me. It's about the Caribbean food and, and all that, that entails. Just a bit like how Indian food was brought to the UK all those years ago when fish and chips was the main, was got a mainstay of British food, which is really boring really. And then Indian food was, was not created. The Indian food that we know here was actually originated in, in, in Bradford, mm -hmm. I've got to say. Because the flavors that's here, that, I mean, if you was to go to Mumbai or one of these places, if you ask for chicken tikka masala, they probably ask you what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> you know, because it, they had to reinvent that to be able to, um, to, to, to make British people understand what it is. And I think that's the job that I have to do with Caribbean food. So the focus for me is still the same. It hasn't changed. It's a bigger picture than just going into the dragons then and saying, Levi was ready with the sauce. For me, the, the picture, I mean, we just launched in Jamaica recently. We've launched in Canada. And as I said before, we look at the picture of, of the US. So that's how you transform a business from zero, you know, into something that people can be proud of. You know, we are not going to be able to do the same, but I still think the philosophy is the same that you've got to fix up yourself. You know, get yourself ready. Just to go over back the points, because they're really important. Because we can't just go into business just as we are. And a lot of us think that we can do that. And that's why we fail a lot. If you look on the high streets and you see how many shops, you know, start, say, particularly in my business, in, in Caribbean food, it will start and you will see a shop that says delicious and within the next few months, it's not there again, it's there because there was no planning and they were not ready. And it's the same thing will happen to you if you have your wonderful ideas in your head and you decided to take it out of your head when you're not ready. Get yourself ready. Get the business plan intact and get a mentor on board. That is so important. You'll find that you'll cut all the corners with somebody in place to be able to push you and point you in the right place. And as I said, third and most importantly is staying focused on that job ahead. Staying focused with yourself, with the plan, and the fixing up of yourself. And if you can do that, 
Then write to me and I'll write you a reggae reggae song. song. <laughs> <laughs> Can I sing one more song? Yeah. 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 All right. Well, you know, I started with the music because, again, the music press was the most important thing of the whole thing about reggae reggae for me on TV. If I'd gone on there with a fancy suit and stand in front of the dragons that be here, I, I'd probably be remembered as one of the worst losers of dragons. One of the losers here that can just show out every now and again and just laugh at it. But you know, it's a good thing that I went as me and, and when you all heard the music, you know, it's um it just kind of blew everybody away and, and I'm just so good thanks. Don't you give up on yourself, love will see us through. Tomorrow is another day, work, rest and pray. Oh, mama, look up on boo boo day. Oh, yeah, hear what the old man say. Oh, yeah, moon has shined on a naughty baby. Oh yes, I miss a bull frog that you might think you might talk on. Oh yes, rest a man smoking chalice pipe. Nothing to me like Jamaican nights. Don't be war on the first sign of fighting. Come together, make we all unite. Don't you give up on yourself. Love will see us through. Tomorrow is another day to request them free. Yeah. Well, I'm going to try and take some questions now. So some people putting up their hands like, you know, uh, and stuff like that. So, <laughs> just before we do that, um, what, what we've done to make it, what can you say? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, excellent. What we've done to make it a sort of more structured Q&A session, um, I'm going to introduce Fusion, who will be hosting the Q&A session. And I think Fusion's actually one of the coolest guys I've actually ever met in my life. And I think he's got so much energy, I think, you know, I'll just pass it over to him to, to kick it off from here. Can we uh, give thanks to Levi Roots? Very eloquent, massively inspired, and also to um, Oris as well for the introduction, thank you. I mean, it's always a pleasure being part of a NACU project because NACU is all about awakening the potential of young people. And just looking at across the room, I know you guys are all inspired and awake from this session. But if Levi Roots is giving you the chicken and the flavour, you guys need to bring some spice into the mix as well, right? Like. So I want to see what we're cooking up here today. Because my company industry in the streets, we always have flavour. And hopefully we want some flavour here today. So if we're cooking a meal that's just like one pound pizza, yeah, or it's like chicken and chips, that's like a level one to me. Make some level one noise. One, two, three. Yeah, yeah that's dry up, don't want that. Okay, we've got something a bit more flavour, a bit more spice in there, something a bit more tasty. You've got some rice and you've got some chicken, yeah? Bit of that um, reggae flavour, just a touch though, not enough though. It's like a level five. So, count of three, one, two, three. Yeah. All right then. Now, if we've got a meal fit for our king, yeah? We got the jerk, we got the rice peas, the ackee, the saltfish, got the round punch, belly full time, yeah? On a rating of 10, give me some noise. One, two, three. Woo! That means we're ready for this session. So please, uh, leave my roots, please grab a seat. We're gonna ask a few questions, and I see some hands up, I'm gonna come to you first. But first, I should ask a quick question to Levi, because yeah. my question to you is, we're sitting in the midst of success. 60 million is the worth of the business. Yes. You've got a great partnership. I can't move for your brand. Even when I'm getting food just to go and get a little carton of milk, I see the sauce, the peanuts, the chips, you know what I mean, the crisps, the whole shebang, yeah? So what was life like before 2006? And what gave you the confidence to carry on and actually get to the point where you're pitching to the Dragons? 